This week, the salvage squad are in the Rambler's paradise of the Derbyshire Peak District. But we're not here to take a stroll with the Woolly Sock Brigade. We're here to unearth a piece of history that changed the course of World War I. What do you reckon? Train, plane or automobile? Plane. I'll take your money. Take your bets, sir. Part of a fleet of over a thousand, our mystery machine is one of the few to have survived the last 80 years. It might look a bit strange, but machines like this helped to win World War I. So what the blazes is it? It's a simplex narrow-gauge locomotive, of course. The weird-looking body armour was essential for a machine that continually braved shells and shrapnel, running men and munitions right up to the front lines. And if we can manage it, in a few months' time she should be pulling a full load again, just as she did almost a century ago. The man who's largely responsible for her surviving at all is Ron Redman. Hello, Hello Ron, mate. Meet the squad. Hi. Hello there. Nice to meet you, Ron. Hi. Hi, Ron. So what do you reckon, everyone? It's a beast. It's got such personality already. It's in pretty good condition for its age, but there is a lot of work to do. I mean, it's just amazing. It's extraordinary thing, isn't it? Well, let's have a little look inside. Oh, let me through. <laughs> <laughs> Let me drive it. Yeah, I want it. to drive it. It's fantastic. Isn't it good? <laughs> Look, you can go forward. And backwards. And backwards. Like, get into trouble, get out of trouble as quick as you like. Oh, what is it, Jerry? Is it petrol, petrol. or diesel? Almost certainly petrol. You know, First World War, and it's in such good condition. It is amazing. It's, it's, it's amazing. It? Ron discovered this strange looking machine in the early 60s. It escaped the scrap heap by toiling away in a sewage work in Leeds, hauling truckloads of, uh, shall we say, waste. Since retirement, it's been stored by the Moseley Railway Trust. How did you feel seeing it there in a sewerage works? Uh, well, it was remarkable. I mean, it was a pure survivor from the First World War, and uh, we just couldn't believe our eyes the first time we saw it. I've always been an absolute out-and-out -out railway enthusiast, and for the last uh, 44 years, I've been chairman of the Narrow Gauge Railway Society. So I think that's an indication of how keen I am. <laughs> I should say. And I found this in 1961, and straight away I decided it just had to be saved. And you'd like to see it running again, Ron? I should really like to see it running, yes. Well, here's the deal, Ron. If we can restore it, which is still an if, you won't be able to see it until we have. Is that all right with you? But I can come back then. Certainly can. That's fine. I'll come across and have a drive. Thanks very much. Cheers. Well, if we're going to fix it, we'll need to haul it out of hibernation at Moseley and take it away for some major surgery. One, two, three. It's like bolting together a giant train set. I should have worn my suit. <laughs> Lovely. Very good. Hoo -ha! With no See? engine to help, right. it's going to oh. take sweat and muscle to get her out. She may look cute, but she's still a six ton lump. Well, we're getting a little bit of a roll now. I don't know why, but Jerry looks very scary staring out of there. Do it, actually. You just keep an eye on it. We'll do this. Right. Well, I don't care, you're there. <laughs> she's big, she's bad. <laughs> 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 wagon stops wagon. Yeah. So the squad prepare themselves for some hard work. Ron's gone, and I'm off to see if I can find out something about the history of this little locomotive. Take it away! Narrow gauge track is, well, narrower than mainline track, which means it's quick and easy to lay and can squeak through tiny gaps and round tight curves. Usually used to pull goods in difficult terrain, tiny steam engines revolutionised industries like quarrying and mining a hundred years ago. And by the First World War, petrol engines like ours were beginning to displace steam. What almost all narrow gauge locos share is a real simplicity and economy of design. And our simplex follows that tradition scrupulously. Everything is bolted to a simple steel frame chassis. The petrol engine sits under the driver. This drives a simple gearbox with two gears to go forward and an identical two in reverse. 
So, really, there's no front or back. It goes just as well in both directions. The gearbox drives only one set of wheels with a giant bicycle chain. Cover it all in four tons of body armour, and that's all there is to it. But it's 20 years since the wheels last turned, and even a simple machine can turn into a nightmare after enough neglect. So we've taken it up to Derbyshire and enlisted the help of loco expert Bob Banks to make sure we don't go off the rails. Hello, Bob. Morning. Morning, mate. Oh, Hello, mate. Hiya. Hey. Right. Doesn't she look wonderful? What do you think of it? Let's take it apart. It's brilliant, yeah. isn't it? It's brilliant. Yeah. Very unusual looking thing, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, where do we what start, are we Bob? Do, then? What are we going to do? Well, basically, we're heading for the engine. The engine on this loco has not run for years. Just take a look. <coughs> what do you think of that, then? Brilliant. Mm. Yeah. And is that an unknown quantity at the it, moment? It is at the moment, and there are a few bits missing off it. Begs I never go at that. Well, that's just up your street. You'll enjoy that. Another big job of the wheels. If you want to have a look at those there, yeah. they've done a lot of hard miles. All the chassis rebuilt, all the chassis painted, engine in, armour plating, all yeah. that cleaned down, painted. Oh, stop it, it's funny more and more. <laughs> paint <laughs> paint <laughs> rushes out. By the end of this, I'm going to know every <laughs> single piece in this loco. Well, I hope, well. I hope you will. That's it. I hope you will. That's what it's about. Yeah, well, that's what it's all about. Well, let's dig in and get that engine out then. Yeah. Right. Where shall we start? Uh, well, we'll have to start on the roof, so. If you want to just go around yeah. there and get organised with the chains, we'll do, we'll do it. Right, you on? So, they've really got their work cut out. First job is to remove all the heavyweight armour. Then Claire's got the job of finding the original markings and colours before stripping and repainting it. The engine and gearbox will have to come out and it will be down to Jerry to get the engine running and find replacements for any missing parts. The wheels look to be in a shocking state, so Axel's going to have to get them off and sort them out. The plan is to return her to exactly how she was when she went to war. So any non-original parts like these windows will be chucked. It's more than 80 years since the armour was fitted and it needs a little persuasion from Axel's favourite tool. Oops. According to Axel, size does matter. Go on. Our model of Loco was known as the protected version. There was a version with even heavier armour, and I bet the squad are glad we're not doing that one, because this armour's quite heavy enough. Nice shade of beef, you <laughs> OK. Yeah, brilliant. Right, this side's ready to go. What, you mean the door? No, no, the, the front panelling. Mm -hmm. Now that has made it look different, doesn't it? Oh, look at that. Did you just lift the back bit off there? Yeah. Oh. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realise I'd taken the back end of it off. I'm so busy in the front there, I'm doing the front part, but uh, it's, just, it's all gone. It's just looking completely different. It's good, isn't it? In 1914, the British thought the war would be fast moving and put their faith in newfangled lorries. But by 1916, with stalemate in the trenches, the lorries had churned the heavily used roads into a muddy quagmire and were quite literally stuck. Unable to get enough equipment through to the front line, the War Department turned in desperation to cheap, versatile, narrow-gauge railways instead. But close to the front line, steam was a no-no. Smoke by day and sparks by night made them too good a target. The solution was light, petrol engine machines like ours. Over a thousand simplex locos were delivered to the War Department and spent their lives ghosting up to the front line under the cover of darkness. By the end of the war, more than 60,000 men were working on over 2,000 miles of a tiny track. But their vital role is all but forgotten. How's that? Yeah, to me. Oh, we like that. Back at the workshop, the old petrol engine's out and Jerry's itching to get his hands on it. Jerry, one baby to deal with. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, it's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bob warned them there were bits missing, but he didn't say how critical they were. This empty hole should have a carburetor bolted to it, but it's gone AWOL. I know that the carburetor used on this is a Zenith Type 42, 
Now, that's very, very similar to the ones used on an unsupercharged Bugatti racing car. So I think that's going to be my first line of inquiry. Jerry Shaw, one of his contacts in the classic car world, can help. Oh, hi. Long shot. I'm after a Type 42 left-hand float bowl Zenith carburetor. No, you haven't got one of those. Didn't really think you would have, but uh, I've got to keep trying. While Jerry tries to track down a replacement carburetor, I've headed for the hills. Pistiniog in North Wales is so mountainous, even the sheep need four-wheel drive. So, it's the natural habitat of our little trains. And I've come here because Ron has promised to initiate me in the secret ways of the narrow gauge railway. It was like walking into a giant's train set. I'm just captivated by all these small engines, really. I think uh, they're much more manageable size than mainline railways. And they really, uh, they do a fantastic job in mountainous country like this. I think they've made certain parts of the country accessible that wouldn't, wouldn't have been possible with, uh, with standard gauge. It would just have cost too much to put a, a main line through. These are wonderful railways with a lot of history. But Ron's had his fair share of ribbing about his obsession. I did eventually go into civil engineering and uh, I went into the drawing office one day and they found out that I was interested in railways and, and somebody said in the background, oh, you know him, he's a trains vestite. And, <laughs> and, and uh, oh, I had to live that down for a long time. You know. <laughs> Determined to turn me into a trains vestite too, Ron took me for a spin. Not big on safety, these ones, are they, Ron? No, no, they're red. <laughs> It's quite a long drop down there. This is about as authentic as we'll get the First World War, I think. Yeah, without the actual oh, sound. the track's a bit better. The track's pretty good. So it must be pleasing to see a train working like this. Oh, yes. I think it's, uh, it's a marvellous way to spend the Monday. Not the perfect weather, but the perfect environment. Would you be pleased to see our loco back on the tracks? Oh, yes. Yes, yes I'm really looking forward to that. Well. My trip with Ron's all very well, but the restoration of our little loco looks like it might be going off the rails as Jerry struggles to track down the right. vital carburetor. Ah! Well, that's it. Every single one of my contacts is exhausted. I don't know what to do. And without the carb, these old movies could be the only time we actually see her running. <laughs> Say hello to free trials of our latest services. Ideas for better business. T-Mobile. Would you call yourself adventurous? Perhaps you're just not aware that you live in one of the most inhospitable places on Earth, where people fight over parking spaces and idiots cross without warning, a place where you must edge out gradually, keep your distance, and offer up prayers to the god of traffic lights. Please stay green. Please stay green. Of course you're adventurous. You just happen to live in Orpington, that's all. Here they come, Plaque's worst nightmare. The crissing and crossing, crossing and crissing bristles of the oral B cross action toothbrush. Lifting and sweeping away more plaque, even more plaque than the leading manual toothbrush and battery brush. Beware, Plaque, oral B cross action. What are these? Magic business binoculars. How do they work? You look through them, you see the future of business. Wow. The future sure looks different. What do you see? It's a 3D holographic projection of the world to come. Things move fast. Everything's integrated. Everything works in real time. How do we get everything to work? I don't know. It says I need another quarter. Say hello to customer services that understand your business. Ideas for better business. T-Mobile.
The salvage squad are restoring one of the forgotten heroes of World War I, a narrow-gauge loco used to ferry troops and ammo to the front line. Jerry's task is to breathe life into her tired old petrol engine, but the rear carburetor is missing. He was confident he'd find it from one of his contacts, but it's so rare, no one can help. So, Jerry's going to dump the problem on some poor old mug. Hello? Oh, hi, Suggs, it's Jerry. Hello, Jerry, old mate. Look, are you still at the narrow gauge railway? Well, only just. Um, I've just finished having a chat with Ron and I'm on my way. Great. I need a part, otherwise we're stuffed. I want a carburetor suitable for a 1918 simplex locomotive. Can you help me? For a 1918 simplex loco, a carburetor. Well, I can certainly ask. Brilliant, mate. Thanks. Bye bye. Blimey. I wouldn't know a carburetor if I tripped over one. Carburetor. Yeah. But the guys at Festiniog tell me there's a fabled room where old locos go to die. And they swear that somewhere in this ultimate train spotter's shed is the right carb for our loco. Only where? If I can't find it, our loco could end up on the shelf too. Just a pile of old bits. Ready? Back in the workshop, go. Axel and Claire are trying to reach the wheels to see just how bad they are. Look at that. Look. Oh, one, two. oh! 80 years of hauling sewage has really knackered them. Ooh. Look at that. Gorgeous. What a thing. These wheels used to be flat on top, so Axel's really got his work cut out. And Jerry's ready to dismantle the engine, which should keep him happy for a while. I love these old things. They're... Really simple, really basic, amazingly well made. They seem to last up forever. Yeah, this is, this is a nice thing to get my hands on. Why is it I don't think that's the last we'll hear of Jerry and his engine? Still, unknown to him, I did manage to find the carburetor. But I'd still like to go back to the squad with some idea of the life our little loco led. So I've come to the Royal Engineers Museum to talk to historian Rebecca Cheney about some of the people who spent the war with locos like ours. So the tracks would have run right up to the front line? They did, that... yeah. Yeah, and we've got, we've got trench maps in, in the collection here at the museum that show them going up to 100 metres just behind the actual front line trenches as well. They would have constantly been under heavy bombardment from the German artillery and that kind of thing. It was just as dangerous as, as being in the front line. In these conditions, there was no shortage of heroes, like 19-year-old Alfred Furlonger. He was working with the light railways at a depot and saw a fire on a couple of the engines, wagons, of an engine that he was clearing. Um, unfortunately, this engine was very, very close to a massive ammunition dump, which was on the outskirts of a French village. And in order so the, the, the fire didn't spread to the ammunition dump, him and four other sappers um, risked the fire and actually moved the engine away. But unfortunately, just as they actually cleared the area, um, the engine exploded and, and killed him, unfortunately. But for that, he was also awarded an Albert Medal. And these are really quite rare. They were um, granted for um, saving life. In saving life in Flanders, at the cost of his own. And do we know what he looked like? Yeah, we've got just this one photograph of him. Yeah. Just an ordinary looking bloke. Yeah. But I suppose they all were ordinary blokes, weren't they? Conditions on the Somme were often wet and muddy, causing lots of problems for the train drivers, like wheels spinning on the damp tracks. They had the same problem at the sewage works, and to solve it, they scattered sand on the track to improve the grip. But the effect has been to wear a deep groove down the middle of the wheels, which will need to be flattened off. To do this, the whole wheel is spun in a huge lathe, and the cutting tool applied to the moving wheel to cut through the worn and wobbly metal and give the wheels the correct shape again. So we ready okay. for a cut? We certainly are. Yeah. We'll just set it going. Right. Good job. Just gotta take it nice and steady to start with. As the cutter bites into the lumpy old iron, it skims off just the worn and rusty surface. Yeah. 
That's the kind of sound you want to hear, isn't it? Certainly is. How long have we got? We could be here for a while. <laughs> The new face looks perfect, as good as the day it left the Simplex factory 84 years ago. Back at the it's workshop, true, I mean, Jerry's love affair with the engine is over, and he's called in Bob for a spot of marital guidance. There are three key sections they have to separate, the crankcase and the two cylinder blocks. Inside the cylinder blocks are the pistons. They should just slide out as the cylinder blocks are lifted. But our pistons are seized in the cylinders and the blocks just won't lift off. Right, Bob. I suppose the only thing to do is to have a heave at that flywheel. Give it a try. See if we can't get it to rotate a few times and then have another go at whooping yeah. all the blocks off. Right. Who's going to do the honours? Go on. We'll both have a go. Go on then, mate. Ready? Now, there are two methods of freeing them. A nice warm Ready. bath in oil to loosen things off back. or a bit of brute force and ignorance. And Jerry's got plenty of God, both. Oh dear, um... I told you not to go, Matt. <laughs> no, you didn't. You said put it a bit further this way. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Wash your fingers if it suddenly goes, mate. No, right, OK, fine. God, that was time. We, no, look, <sighs> problems. Yeah. Ah, ha, 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 It's going nowhere, matey, because that wedge is now stopping the piston from coming out of the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> We are a pair of dings. Look. No, it isn't down there, yeah? Yes, it is. It's there. No, it isn't. Look at it. No, it, it, is, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is not. It is too. Huh? So we've got to knock this beggar out now. This is turning into a pantomime. Oh, well. It isn't. It is. It is not. Trust it's me. Alive. Trust me. It's rusty up there. That's where I was cleaning it. That is the inside of the piss, and I, I'm sure of it. Are we going to. Put... Either that or I can feel the edge of the liner. You can feel the edge of the liner. Yeah, oh, we, oh, yeah we're going to have money on this. No. Oh. <laughs> Jerry's none too happy. You see that? That's a bit how I feel at present. I feel like a diesel soaked rag. Come on, Jerry, yeah. sit down and have a cup of tea, mate. Apart. But there's no rest for the wicked. <laughs> Claire's task is to make the loco look like it did oh, in 1918. Yeah, She's busting oh. to show them what her sleuthing has revealed Hello. about its original livery. There we go. Look at that. Where do you look for original paint? Where it's hard to repaint, where it's hard to get a paintbrush in, yeah? And underneath yeah. the paint, underneath the petrol tank is about as hard as it gets. Yeah. Yep. So look, look, we've got we've got sewage works colour. First world war colour. Sewage works colour. Clever. I like color. that. I very really much like that. So where are we going? Sewage works chic? Or World War One drab? World War One drab, for sure. Yeah. That's, That's for the most sure. interesting part of its history for me. Yeah. So um, let's go for it. I suppose we ought to think about sort of logos and liveries and things like that. Well, if you look at the photographs... We're beginning to know this thing backwards, aren't we? <laughs> Spot the difference. It's grey. Yeah, <laughs> it's black and white photographs. <laughs> <laughs> right, silencer, obviously. Yeah. Uh, some numbering. Yeah. So there's a big identification plate on the front. I like that. This is interesting because those look like they're cast plates, so it might have a look see if we can find on the armour holes or something like that where they might have been. Yeah. You're a bit too clever for this job, girl. A rugar. <laughs> That's the best bit, isn't it? It's the detective yeah. work. It's, yeah, it is. You know, it's getting to know the object. So, that's a big step forward in getting her back to her First World War condition. Claire's found the original colour, information that we couldn't get from black and white photos, and Jerry's noticed that the exhaust had specially cast ends on it, and that she had War Department number plates. I've been doing some sleuthing too, and I may be able to explain how our loco got from the trenches of France to a sewage works in Leeds. But the answer may derail the whole project. Well, I've been doing a bit of digging and delving, and what I've discovered is that our loco was number 1369, and the last one that was ever made was 1386. So, if my mathematics served me correctly, that means it was 17 from the last one ever made. And even more interestingly, I found an advert from Surplus magazine just at the end of the First World War in which they're selling some locos, exactly the same type as ours, new ones, at Perfleet docks. So it got as far as the docks, presumably on its way to France. But digging even further, I find out there were 33 of these locos at the docks at Perfleet, which tells us as ours was 17 from the last made, 
that that's as far as it got. It didn't make it to France. So unfortunately, I've got some rather sad news for the squad. So, it looks like the only battle our loco's ever seen is the one between our Jerry and Bob. But the grease monkeys have finally triumphed over the engine. And after all that, it wasn't too bad inside. That's a bit of a curate's egg, really, isn't it? Good in parts. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, some is tons better than I expect it would be for a 1918 engine. Thank heavens it's a part. Uh, I got to the point there that uh, I thought it was going to be chuck it into a tank of diesel and leave it for three weeks, in which case we weren't going to get this project finished. Yeah, it's, it's a part. I'm, I'm thrilled to bits. I now want to build it. Get on with it. Well, let's hope his confidence isn't misplaced. As far as Ron's concerned, this job is just too important to fail. Well, I think anything from left over from the, the so-called war to end all wars is... Uh, is worth saving, and uh, it had been out of service for, for quite a long time. But I think this protected loco is, is well worthy of uh, the attention it's getting. Long overdue. But well, let's hope we don't disappoint him. After all my detective work, I'm finally going to unite Jerry with the crucial carburetor I found in Wales. Jerry. Oh, what? I bring you good news. The carb. Where the I won't ask. It is. It's a 42 HAZ Zenith. That's really? the one. Excellent. Hey! Yeah, it's got it. Look at that. Nice. The holy grail of carburetors, that. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. I'm only here to help and facilitate. I've also got a little bit more news here. In my researching of the history of the Loco, which was built in 1918, I found out it was part of the last batch that were due for France, but it never actually made it. Um... At present, lying in Perfleet, where it was until peace was declared. So mm. it never actually made the front. But well, that's why it survived, is not it? That's why we've got it here today. True. Well, you get on with fixing that in, and uh, I'll see you later. Okay. Come see you later. Nice one, Joe. Yeah, it's coming on, isn't it? It kind of dents things a bit to find out our loco never actually got to France. But I have a cunning plan. One thing I've discovered in researching our history is that a small section of the original World War I track still exists in France. So, I'm off to the continent. See? if we can get her to run on the rails she was built for. Sometime in their lives, they could find themselves unfairly judged and isolated by society. It could happen to a friend, a relative, a partner. It could happen to you. Let's stop the stigma of mental ill health. See me, I'm a person, not a label. If you're like me, you hate having your teeth out for long. Real cleaning doesn't come much quicker than this baby. With Sterid and Three Minutes, active oxygen bubbles go everywhere. Cleaning more effectively than any toothbrush, three minutes of powerful antibacterial activity, and my teeth feel spotless. Oh, yes. Sorry, Mouse Dash. Got to catch the morning canoes. Sterid and Three Minutes, get your teeth into life. Control to Tom. Lunch is on the way. Right. Colgate Total's unique antibacterial shield helps protect you, even when you eat and drink. So you think you've found your new sporty hatchback? Is it what car's car of the year 2003? And does it come with a year's free insurance? Try the Seat Ibiza and compare it to the car you were going to buy. We're halfway through the restoration of a 40 horsepower simplex narrow gauge locomotive designed to haul troops and ammo to the front line. Axel's done a beautiful job on the knackered wheels now, while poor old Jerry's been battling with the loco's engine and Claire's been playing Miss Marple, tracking down details and paint colours from World War I. Unfortunately, I've discovered that our loco never made it to France. 
It was still at the docks when the war ended and was flogged off to a sewage works in Leeds. So I've come to Frassy in the Somme Valley in France to the last remaining bit of First World War track. And I've got a plan. And the plan is to get our loco out here and have her travelling down the track she was built for for the first time. The line is run by David Blondin and he told me how they came to save this remarkable slice of history. So we, we, we find it uh, at the beginning of the 70s and, uh, and so why not uh, restore it and uh, to, to, to keep it and as a, a memory, you know. How close are we here to the front line of the war? Uh, you know, the front moved a lot during yeah. the war. So it was here, it was 10 kilometers uh, ago and uh, so... So we're right in the, the middle of it? Yes, the sun battle was just here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just it's continual shelling and bombing, yes. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, and they were taking everything to the front, weren't they? They were taking supplies. Yes, ammunition and uh, men and uh, four men in the other way, you know. Uh, so the narrow gauge railway was, was really important during the first war, I think. And uh, but when you you see uh, pictures or film, you rarely see narrow gauge railway, you know. But they were they were here. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The unsung heroes of the of the war. Mm. David, we are restoring a First World War locomotive. Would it be possible to bring it? Uh, yes, to this of track? course. I think it's the. A better place to do yes. this. Yes. I think it would be absolutely perfect to see it on the track. Because it's unusual because it never made it to France. It was supposed to come, but it, it was at the end of the war. So I think it would be very interesting to see it back yes. where it was meant to be. If we are going to take her to the Somme, then it's important that she looks just as she would have if she'd been there 80 years ago. And back at the workshop, Axel and Claire are busy painting the body armour. Claire's had paint made up to match the original World War I colour she discovered under the fuel tank. Horrible, sludgy, khaki colour. That's amazing. It just says war, doesn't it? Yeah, khaki, yeah. war. First World War, out on the muddy battlefields of France. And then you've got these tiny little trains pulling huge weights out to the front, full of ammunition. Huge explosive weights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't like to be driving one, would you? I'd love to drive it, but not with not a ton water. of ammunition <laughs> behind and people sort of shooting at you. I mean, you just think of the guys at the front. They need food, water, paper, Supplies, horses, yeah. the whole whole lot. And of course, the sadness is, is on the cargo, on the trip going back, probably taking the wounded home. Yeah. Steam locos rarely worked at the front, as clouds of steam and showers of sparks gave their location away. But the red hot exhaust of petrol engines could still give the game away at night. So ours came with an oversized exhaust that would never glow. Now, being shot at wasn't a big worry in the Leeds sewage works, and the original exhaust was scrapped long ago. So Claire's obsession with originality has led her to a foundry in a place called Dove's Hole, where she's going to cast exact copies of the exhaust parts. She's had patterns made that should be exact copies of the exhaust end plates. Now this is the bottom cover arm at the moment. Right. Cover it all over, and then just ram it all. Yeah, just tiny tall This sand packs tightly around the pattern and then hardens in a process called curing. With the sand hardened, each mould can be opened up and the pattern removed, leaving depressions in each half of the mould exactly the size and shape of the pattern. And as you see, we end up with the imprint of everything. Right, so if I take the pattern out... Yeah. Because the last thing I'll do is destroy your sand mould. Yeah, yeah, it? you don't want me ripping and rolling yeah. it out. Now I'll glue up to the... T Top half the box. Right, so and that will glue the two halves together, hopefully giving a bit more strength to stop them from separating out. You don't want all the metal pouring out between. Yeah, you. well, we don't want that, no. With the mould clamped back together, there's a hole inside, the exact shape of the part we want. All they have to do now is fill it with molten metal. There you go. Got him. Okay. Okay, push it back, that's him. Is it back, clear? Yeah. Okay, next one down here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. 
Hey, is that cute? <laughs> Isn't it good? Don't you love all the sparkles? I just keep forgetting how dangerous it is. Quite a bit warm. Bloody good. Is it hot? It takes a couple of hours for it all to cool, and then it's time to crack open the mould. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, that look too bad. No, it'll be fine. Can we kick it out? Yeah, no problem. Check on the back side of it. Yeah, there you go. Not bad at all. Oh, it's still hot. Yeah, it's still hot. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi, Claire. Got a pattern oh. here for number plate. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks very much. All right. That's the um, ID plate for the front of the engine. All oh, right, I'm sure we can do that. It would be easier than the other one, I would think. Brilliant. I love going to foundries. I don't know what it is. It's probably all about molten metal. But I got the number plates, so they just have to be drilled and painted and the ends of the silencer. They've got to find a tube to run between them. Without a silencer, the noise from the exhaust pipe would be deafening, because every time an engine fires, it produces an explosive cough of exhaust gas. The silencer is simply a large metal can on the end of the exhaust pipe. The noisy pulses of exhaust gas enter the can where they expand, slow down and mix, so that when they leave the silencer, the explosive bang is more of a putt. There okay. we go. Found a bit of pipe, exactly the right diameter. So now my beautiful assistant here is going to hold it while I cut it to the right length. Great story. Mm. You ready? Ready when you are. Oh! Wow. Oh, look at that. We just went off at the end. Good job you're not drilling a tunnel, isn't it? <laughs> not the thing, that's going to be fine. Is it great? <laughs> yes. Well, the casting needs some machining done, some bolt holes drilled, but it will fit, or I'll make it fit. Every engine has its own special sound, and our loco's no exception. Ron can't wait to hear it. Uh, we're really looking forward to, to seeing it running again and hearing that distinctive sound. I think it's going to be, it's going to be great. <laughs> Banned from seeing our loco, Ron's dragged wife Jean off to see yet more narrow gauge machines. Well, I think my wife has come to terms with it over the years. Um, I think uh, she is very tolerant and uh, I think that's a good thing. We have been married 47 years. When he took Jean rambling in a field at the age of 16, she quickly realised it wasn't a romantic stroll. Ron was train hunting. He said, it's coming. Come on. And he set off and ran and leapt this stream and left me in the field wearing high heels and with the cows coming up behind me. And I didn't know whether I could jump over this stream or not. So I said a little prayer and jumped and I managed it. But my shoes just sank into the mud at the other side. And he'd just gone off and he was photographing the engine. So that's how I should have known then. <laughs> but it's definitely added something. I was only thinking about it the other day. You know, when you've been married a long time, you suddenly start to think, what would it have been like if he hadn't been interested? We'd have probably had a lot less fun. We'd get this inside the garage instead of the car, couldn't we? A lot more valuable. Well, there's no chance of Ron putting the simplex into his garage any time soon, as poor old Jerry's engine is still in bits. But with the paint dry, Claire and Axel need his help to get the heavy armour back on. Go on, then. There's no fine control on this, all right? Yeah, I know. Go on. Yeah, I know. Ordinarily, it's bolts the top, nuts the bottom. So if the it falls out, if it falls, it falls out, out, it still stays, stays, stays in. in. Right, okay. Right, I'm done. Skill on this side. Let's make a narrow gauge locomotive. Are we ready? Yeah. Going down. 
So let's get spannering. That lined up quite nicely, didn't it? Okay. Stop. Right. Right. Ah, you little horror! Yay! Ha <laughs> <laughs> You won't. Yes! <laughs> you know that. <laughs> We've got wheels, we've got undercarriage, we've got body and armour. Yeah. How about an engine, Joe? Can you put it in? Um, uh, quite finished them yet, because they, they'll be there, they'll be there, I promise you. I promise you. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will you pull me away to work on this? Oh, Gary, look at me. <laughs> so the body and chassis done, and Axel and Claire have other projects to get on with. But the Loco's engine is still a pile of bits, so Jerry's going to be burning the midnight oil for some time yet. This advert could save your life. A properly fitted windscreen accounts for up to 30% of your car's structural strength. At Autoglass, we replace your windscreen knowing it could save your life if your car rolls. Autoglass. We fit safety as standard. Oh, burn love. Try these. Gaviscon tablets. See what they'll do for you. into something like this. You don't even know Kung Fu. You must train with a wise master. Paint a fence. When the Dutch brew the Grosch, they take their time. So must you. Grosch, we only let you drink it when it's ready. Now we've got your attention. We hope you remember a properly replaced windscreen could save your life. Autoglass. We fit safety as standard. He designed helicopters, submarines and tanks 500 years before they became reality. But would Da Vinci's machines have actually worked? Two teams are given three months to build an 80-foot crossbow and a flying machine. Leonardo's Dream Machines. After Locomotive. The salvage squad have been restoring a World War I narrow-gauge loco. It was destined to work on the huge network that supported troops at the front line. But it turns out, ours never made it. So, I've arranged for her to run on the last remaining stretch of First World War track in the Somme Valley. Claire and Axel have finished the restoration of the body and chassis, and we've all packed our bags and headed for France. Which leaves good old Jerry home alone, still battling to get that 80-year-old engine running. Last piece, I hope. After a lot of late nights, the engine looks great, but it's yet to run. Oh, gorgeous. I've got a little present for you. It's all down to Jerry now. A drop of petrol to feed the carburetor. Contact. And finally, a good pull on the starting handle. Go on, Jerry. Yes! Look up! Come on, it. Thank you. 
It's nearly 30 years since she last ran. Jerry's done a top job. In the Somme Valley, the last surviving piece of First World War track is waiting for our loco. She failed to get here 80 years ago, and we weren't sure she'd make it this time. But, after a long overnight journey, Jerry's finally arrived. The rest of us are waiting for him, and we've got just one question. Is it going to start, Jerry? It did in the workshop. It did in the workshop, so... Unless it's got soaked through on the trip down, which I don't think it has, it should be fine. A bit of track to get her off the truck, and it's time to see if Jerry really did fix her or just struck lucky. Right, that's a pop then, shall we? Go on, then, mate. <coughs> Jerry, but will she start? Come on. We've got all the faith in you, mate. Come on, Jerry. He's got the concerned face on. Ooh. What are you doing, Jeff? Waiting for the field to come up. He's waiting for the fuel to come up. He's waiting for the fuel to come up. What's happening now, Jerry? I'm still waiting for the fuel to come up. He's still waiting for the fuel to come up. Have you had anything to do with it, Jerry? No, I ran last time I touched it, mate. There's a sludge trap that uh, catches any particles that are in the tank and it conceivably could have blocked, but we'll fill it up well and truly and have a go. Right. It's not a big problem, is it? No. You mean you didn't unblock the sludge trap? Well, we did, yes. But it could have conceivably blocked it. Yeah, who, who did clean the fuel tank out? There's nothing wrong with that fuel tank, mate. Absolutely nothing wrong. Yeah? Was it you? Yeah. Oh. No. Right. No, don't Jerry. make that noise. Oh, Jerry. Don't right. make that noise. He done the fuel tank. No, it's a proper job on that fuel tank. <laughs> How's it looking, Jerry? Nothing. So we've definitely got... It's not my fault. Uh -uh. No, no. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the fuel tank. There must be. Got a lovely carburetor, I don't know that much. Ah, we are. There we go. Come on, Jerry, get cranky. Getting serious now, aren't you? Eh? Got my old jacket, mate. If you would. All sense of humour, the sense of evaporated. Ready? Come on, Mr. T. Nearly. The weight of the project's on Jerry's shoulders again. Ooh. Careful, don't kick back on you, all right? Ooh. Come on, Joe. Yeah! yeah! As the engine warms up, Claire's silence is working beautifully. Time now to see how she goes, with John Rowlands from the Mosley Trust as our test pilot. Ron Redmond, the man who found her, is on his way to inspect the squad's work. Oh, he's going back up the ramp. Don't do that. <laughs> All right, looks good. But there's just time for Jerry to get his greasy mitts on the controls. Come on, Jerry. Get in, son. Right, you are, they? Yeah, get in. Strip for action. Yes. Cheers, matey. That's all right, mate. Oh. No speeding. Yeah. I think you'll have Right, John. The most important thing is the brake there. Yeah. Screws clockwise for on, anti-clockwise for off. Yeah. A forward and reverse selection on this lever. Right. And just two speeds on there. First, First speed second. towards you. There's a neutral in the middle, and then second speed away from you. Right. Oh! the revs, yeah. Brake off. And give a toot on the horn. <laughs> away and gently in with the clutch it uh, it's quite sharp Yay! gentle on the clutch and then straight across from first to second that's it that's about as good as it gets that's as good as it gets is it so bizarre I know. It? two little narrow yeah. wheels and then this huge massive body it's hanging like out of the tracks is he stalled? No, he hasn't stalled. He's going to try and come Kangaroo back. Kangaroo leaping. He did kangaroo a little bit. Here he comes. <laughs> He's coming back. Is he coming back? I'll give you five out of ten for that one. Ah, oh, fair enough. Yeah! Bravo! Yeah. Yeah. Who the man? 
man. <laughs> Who the man? The clutch is interesting, to say the least. Mate. I've never seen anyone kangaroo a train. A train. <laughs> <laughs> what an achievement, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Hold on, I've got to have a go at this. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. This is it. Hey! Hey! Off you go for several miles now. I can't wait to see Sucky's face when he comes back. Now you just imagine a hundred tons of train behind you. Yeah. Use the brake to uh, stop yourself. It's wicked. That is great. That is really, really good. Hey, let's play trains now. <laughs> I want one. I want one. Exactly. My own line and everything. Can we have a train now? With Ron just a few minutes away, it's time to hitch up a bunch of World War One trucks and hide. Hello, and here's Ron. the man himself, Hello. Ron Redman. Nice to see you again. And you. I think I've got something to show you, Ron. Come Very follow good. me. Right. If you hang on here for a second. Right. I can hear something. Yeah, that's a bit exciting. It's not very oh. noisy. Oh. I hope I haven't got this wrong, it's coming from that way. Hey, hey. Well, then, what about this? Yes. Head on the hay! <laughs> well, that sounds healthy enough. What do you think? Hey. Looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that looks absolutely terrific. Like new? <laughs> it is like new. Hello, Ron. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you all again. Hi. Hello. What a way to arrive. Hello. Yes, Hello. that's Hello. it. Hello. Yes, it looks really good. Perfect. It was a great moment when she turned over, yeah. 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 <laughs> She's a bit temperamental, but we got Yeah, that. these 40 horsepower engines are, oh, I think. Yeah. Yes. That yeah, looks good. It even smells good, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I particularly like the fact that now it looks like the First World War logo, yeah. rather than something that's... Yeah. It's a little cracked out of the sewage works. Go on then. OK. All aboard. Yeah. All aboard. Here we go. Hey! So, after 80 years, our loco sets off hauling a train on the first World War track she was built for. So when you see the photographs of them in the First World War with, with these wagons full of shells, you know, quite a load they had, uh, longest train. Sounds really good, really good. So Ron, how does it feel to see it restored? Well, I think, I think it's wonderful. It's, and it's great that it's running again. It's, it's all right. It was looking very sad when the, the project started, wasn't it? And the, there's, there's nothing to locomotives, really, that are just standing still. You want you want uh, some life, you know, and just listen to this noise. I mean, it's it's music to the ears, isn't it? Really, <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. A vintage 40 horsepower engine that giving giving voice. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned the noise at the beginning of the project, and I never really understood, but I do now. Yes. That really is a charming sound. Yes. Good. That's good. I had to restore a buffet next, weren't you? Yeah, that's eh? right. Nice and travelling buffet. <laughs> At its peak, more than 60,000 men worked more than 2,000 miles of this track under enemy fire. Little of this vital but forgotten story of the Great War survives, but at least we've saved a tiny part of it from the scrapyard. The squad are salvaging a steam car next week, and you can find out more about tonight's challenge at channel4.com slash science. Battle stations will show you the B-52 bomber inside out on Thursday at 8. Coming up tonight, would Leonardo da Vinci's designs for a giant crossbow and a glider really have worked? Paul aims to find out by having them built. Next.